and we made it to Ladakh. Woo! Ladakh is set deep in the Indian Himalayas on the western edge of the Tibetan Plateau. Ladakh or Little Tibet is one of the highest and driest inhabited places on earth. Welcome to Leh. In this video, I'll take you around the city of Leh, the capital of Ladakh, but also it's kind of called a shopping center here. You will find tons of shops, restaurants, terraces, and there are a few cultural things to see. So let's start our visit. Throughout our time in Leh, we stayed at the Hotel Glacier View. Ladakhis truly have a hospitality spirit. As is the custom in Ladakh, we were welcomed with milk tea and seaburg-torn juice, called also berry juice. You'll see these berries everywhere on hiking trail and in villages. Once you arrive in Ladakh, it is advised to rest to acclimate your body to the altitude. Indeed, Leh is located at 3,500 meter high. Therefore, we nap straight after our arrival. We woke up from our nap of three hours. We were quite tired because once we reached Leh, we start to have this kind of mountain altitude sickness. So it pref like it's preferably to wait, rest, and we took like some paracetamol in order to feel better. But yeah. But now it's around 5 p.m. and we're still gonna enjoy a bit the last remaining time of sun. In Leh. <laughs> Leh is the largest city of Ladakh and one of the highest permanently inhabited towns in the world. It is usually the principal part of entry in Ladakh as the airport is located here. Leh is kind of a compulsory stop in your travel in Ladakh. We keep on coming back and forth to Leh during our two weeks trip around Ladakh. Leh is deeply influenced by Tibetan Buddhism like other parts of Ladakh. Nevertheless, in Leh, you still find other religions, just as Hinduism, Islam, Sikhism. Leh is the shopping mall of Ladakh. Indeed, Leh is the economic center of the region. You may find everything in Leh. On the contrary, in the rest of Ladakh, it is quite tricky to shop. On the metro, you have many shops, and some of them are on several floors. In Leh Main Market, you'll find many tourist shops. It is almost one of the only places where you may find souvenirs like Tibetan artifacts, jewels, clothing, and so on. Nevertheless, you may still buy local products such as fruits and vegetables, or even handmade headbands, knit by locals. Leh is infused with Indian and Tibetan culture. You'll notice it when walking in the local Leh, which is interesting. It makes Ladakh so special compared to the rest of India. When you stroll in fewer tourist streets, you'll discover local shops such as textile, kitchen equipment, paneer shop, and so on. For those who don't know, what paneer is, is an Indian soft cheese made from curdled milk and some sort of fruits or vegetable acid like lemon juice. Don't hesitate to enter partner shops to observe the partner making process. Like in the rest of India, you'll observe cows walking freely in the street. Currently walking with my cow in the street of Leh. In Leh, cows even receive luxury treatment. So here there is another market which is not that oriented to tourists that much. It's more about like camping and hiking gears. Therefore, if you're missing any kind of equipment for your upcoming trek, you might find it here. They do sell a lot of brands. Nonetheless, stay alert, some are copies while others are real ones. At night time, we went back to the hotel for a good night of sleep. Indeed, the next day we'll explore the cultural side of Leh. We are on our way to the temple and to the Leh Palace. Hey. Jule is a Ladakhi old purport word. It is used to say hello, please, thank you. To reach the monastery, we started to climb from the upper part of the city. There you'll be immersed in traditional Ladakhi's homes. The path to climb up is also easier from that side. It is paved. Moreover, the view is stunning. Oh. 
Oh my god. With the altitude, it's kind of harder to breathe. Yeah. Once we started to get closer to the monastery, we observed Tibetan prayer flags. They are used to promote peace, compassion, strength, and wisdom. The flags do not carry prayers to God, which is a common misconception. Rather, the Tibetans believe that the prayers and mantras will be blown by the wind to spread goodwill and compassion into all pervading space. Therefore, prayer flags are thought to bring benefit to all. This little guy has been following us until the temple. <laughs> Bye! And we finally reached Se Maitreya Temple. We did a full tour of the temple. Om Mani Padmeum is a mantra. It's a combination of values like compassion, ethics, patience, diligence, renunciation, and wisdom. It is said that if you recite the mantra during meditation, it can cure pride, jealousy, ignorance, greed, and aggression. If you are lucky, you may witness prayers. Entrance to the temple costs 20 rupees. Nevertheless, it's not that worth it because you have kind of the same view just down here. Ooh, ooh. The way now is a bit more tricky because we're trying to go to the palace that is just here. It was only kind of the shortest and uh, only way, <laughs> kinda. We arrive safely at Le Palace. To enter the palace, the ticket costs 100 rupees for foreigners. It is open every day of the week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. This former royal palace was constructed around the 17th century. In the mid 19th century, the palace was abandoned by the royal family who was forced to move to Stock Palace. Currently, the palace is maintained and renovated by the Archaeological Survey of India. It is totally worth visiting. You'll stroll around huge walls and wooden balconies. It is a great example of medieval Tibetan architecture and boosts ninth story. Next, we found our way down back to Lay's main market to lunch. going to eat here at the terrace in the restaurant. <sighs> Cannot wait. A bit starving. But I don't know why, I think the altitude, you know, it kind of makes you hungry. There are many trendy terraces overlooking the city and its landmarks. In Le, you can visit also the museum here. It costs around 50 rupees per person. Let's have a look. small but really well maintained it's really clean i really appreciate it somehow and also you can discover a bit like the past how they used to live in the past and how a bit everything was going around here then we went back to the hotel for a special surprise we're going to the shelters to pass by more surprise so fun so this is the famous royal enfield that they have all over india i'm gonna ride that Royal Enfield is an Indian multinational motorcycle manufactured company headquartered in Chennai. It is where we live, by the way. You'll spot Royal Enfield's bikes everywhere in India. They are iconic. I truly love their design.
After this scenic drive, we made it to Shanti Stupa. If you visit the Shanti Stupa, you will have to pay 30 euros. A stupa is a Buddhist commemorative monument usually housing sacred relics. The monument consists of a circular base supporting a massive solid dome. During your visit, you must go clockwise. Little fun fact, the Shanti Stupa was built by Japanese. Furthermore, its location provides panoramic views of the surrounding lakescapes. It is an ideal place to enjoy the golden hour. Once back in Leh, we walk through the Baker Street, observing the bakers at work. We could smell in the air Ladaki bread being baked. It looks so yummy that we couldn't resist. We bought some bread and all the dogs are following us. <laughs> so cute! Finally, it was time to get well-deserved rest. Stay tuned for our adventures across Ladakh. And if you have any further recommendations to share with us, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. And this is how our visit of play ended. Anyway, explore surrounding. Bisous!